Hello, everyone. Thanks to everyone for watching this video. My name is Qi Dang. I am an architect and engineer. Today's video is titled Composite Columns, and it is going to provide you a broad overview of the composite columns and also the resistance of a cross section. I am going to give you an overview of what I am covering today's video. First at all, we will have a look at some fundamentals of the composite columns, then move on to the resistance of an end plate joint and the resistance of a cross section, then wrap up with conclusions. Steel columns in multi-story buildings need protection from fire. This is often provided by encasement in concrete. Three types of joint between a steel beam and the flange of an edge section steel column are shown in this figure. And a short end plate joint is also shown in this figure. They are examples of the only types of joint treated in Eurocode form. An account of the Eurocode design methods for steel and composite joints is available. The calculations needed for a partial strength and plate joint, as in Figure C, are extensive. The rotation capacity of the joint is ensured by using a thin end plate, so that it lines forming it before the bolts at a fracture intention. Plastic bending of the column flange and yielding of the column wrap at D may also occur. The track on bolt fracture may need to allow for prime action. This is the increase of bolt tension caused by compressive force where the edges of the end plate bear against the column flange, as shown in this figure. The tensile resistance of the top bolts, FTRD, is given by the weakest of these types of deformation. The longitudinal reinforcement in the slab is assumed to be at yield intention, so the force FTSRD is known, assuming that any axial force in the beam is negligible. The compressive force at the bottom of the joint cannot exceed FTRD plus FTSRD. Failure could occur by buckling of the column web at E. So this resistance is found next, allowing for the axial compression in the column. If buckling covers, a stiffener can be added, but this is rarely necessary. The compressive force to cause yielding of the bottom flange, FA flange RD, is then found. If it is less than the total tensile force, an area of web is assumed also to yield, such that we have this equation. The lines of action of these four forces are known, so the bending resistance of the joint, MJRD, is found. Now we will see the moment rotation curve for an end plate joint. The information needed for design is a curve of hogging bending moment against the rotation of the joint phi. This is defined as the rotation additional to that which would occur if the joint were rigid and the beam continued to its intersection with the center line of the column, as shown in this figure. It allows for the effect of slip of the shear connection on the longitudinal stiffness of the top reinforcement. The shorter account here is limited to beams of equal depth and with equal hogging bending moments, so that no implant shear is applied to the column web. The steel bottom flange is assumed to be strong enough for force FA web in this figure to be zero. The connections between the column and the two beams are identical, with pairs of bolts at levels A, B, and C. The elasticity of their components is represented by springs with stiffness coefficients as shown here. K1 is shear deformation of the column web panel A, B, C, D. K2 is the compression of the web of the column, and of encasement, if any, at the level of the bottom flange. K3 is extension of the web of the column. K4 is bending of the column flange caused by the tension in both group A. K5 is bending of the end plate caused by the tension in both group A. K10 is extension of both row A. The stiffness of the connection in compression is given by K2. 
the overall stiffness in tension is found from all the other coefficients, taking account of their lever arm for bending, z. This is their distance above the center of compression, which is aligned with stiffness k2. The distances z1 for slab reinforcement and slip, and z2 for both in tension are shown in this figure. Combination of these stiffnesses gives the initial elastic rotational stiffness, moment over rotation, of the connection, Sj initial, which is defined by this equation, where phi is the rotation for a bending moment m, and z is the effective lever arm for bending. The coefficients are found to have a dimension of length. This is illustrated for the simple case where there is no reinforcement and the stiffness in compression is infinite. Then this equation is expressed here. This equation then gives the result with a dimension of length k10 equal to 2ab over lb. The bolts of total net area 2ab and the effective length lb resist the tension m over z2. Their elongation is this E and phi equation. For tension in the steel beam, the flexibility 1 over k are in series, so the total stiffness kt is given by this equation. Slip of the shear connection causes a flexibility 1 over ksc, which is found as a ratio of displacement to force. So for consistency with KSR, the stiffness coefficient is KSC over E, which is in series with KSR. The combined stiffness for reinforcement is given by this equation. The equivalent stiffness in tension, KTEQ, and the effective lever arm Z are defined by this equation. The calculation of KTEQ and Z is illustrated by assuming that when bending moment m causes rotation phi, there is tension T1 at level Z1 and tension T2 at level Z2, so that we have this m equation. The elongations at these levels are shown here. And for rotation phi about the bottom flange, so that we obtain these equations. Elimination of E1, E2, T1, and T2 from the last five equations gives this expression. The previous equations can be solved for Z and KTEQ, giving for the effective lever arm and for the equivalent stiffness in tension. Including the stiffness in compression, we obtain this equation. This stiffness is assumed to be applicable for bending moments mjed up to 2 times mjrd over 3, where mjrd is the bending moment resistance of the joint. At higher bending moments, the current euro code gives the stiffness as this expression, where psi depends on the type of joint, and is 2.7 for a welded or bolted end plate joint. The moment rotation curve for psi equal to 2.7 is shown as OABC in this figure, in which 5.67 is the rotation for MJED equal to 2 times MJRD over 3. Next, we will introduce resistance of a cross section of composite columns. Concrete encased H or I sections are considered as shown in figure A and B. Concrete filled steel tubes is shown in figure C. The encased cross sections are assumed to have biaxial symmetry and to be uniform along each column length. Applied moments are resolved into the planes of major axis and minor axis bending of the column, and their symbols have additional subscripts y and z respectively where necessary. The characteristic elastic flexural stiffness of a column cross section about a principal axis y or z is the sum of contributions from the structural steel, the reinforcement and the concrete, and so has the format as shown here, where E is the elastic modulus of the material, and I the second moment of area of the relevant cross-section. The elastic critical axial load 
is found from this equation, where L should be taken as the length between the lateral restraints in the plane of buckling considered. The concrete term is based on calibration of results from this method against the test data. It was found that Kc equal to 0.6 and that grip should be allowed for by reducing the mean short-term elastic modulus for concrete ECM as expressed here, where NED is the design axial force, NGED is the part of NED that is permanent and phi t is the grip coefficient. The known dimensional relative slenderness of a column length for buckling about a particular axis is defined by this equation. The design resistance to axial load of a straight column too short to buckle, known as the squash load, is given by this equation, where the design strength of the materials include the structural steel, Fyd equal to Fy over gamma A, reinforcement, Fsd equal to Fsk over gamma S, concrete in compression, Fcd equal to Fck over gamma C, and the gammas are the usual partial factors for ultimate limit states. The area AC for a concrete encaser section is conveniently calculated from this equation. For calculating lambda bar, MPLRD is replaced by the characteristic squash load. MPLRK equation shows here, because NCR is a characteristic value. Designed for a combination of loading along the x-axis and bending about the y or z-axis is based on an interaction curve between resistance to compression along MPLRD and resistance to bending about the relevant axis MPLRD. The method is explained with reference to this figure. The plastic resistance MPLRD is given above. The major axis bending of encased line sections, AC may be taken as a straight line, but for other situations, an intermediate point E should be found, as line AC can be too conservative. For point E, the first against the mutual axis position is usually good enough. A similar method is used for the interaction polygon for axial load with minor axis bending. From conclusions what we learned, composite columns are constructed using various combinations of structural steel and concrete in an attempt to utilize the beneficial properties of each material. The interactive and integral behavior of concrete and the structural steel elements makes the composite column a very stiff, more ductile, cost-effective, and consequently a structurally efficient member in building and bridge constructions. Okay. Thanks to everyone for watching my video today, and I do hope you found the video informative and that you learned some things from it. If you do have any questions, then you can write comments and messages. I am happy to answer any questions. Thanks for your watching.